A paragraph is a series of sentences, or in rare cases, one sentence that is organized and coherent and related to one single topic. What are the characteristics of a good paragraph? Let's talk about them. First, it contains a topic sentence. This is generally the first or second sentence of the paragraph. It expresses one main idea. It's like a mini thesis statement, which we've already talked about in an earlier video. This sentence should be clearly linked to the thesis statement and provide unity to the overall argument. It also acts to unify the paragraph. So if my thesis statement in the introduction is the sale of Coca-Cola tracks political changes in Africa, then my topic sentence in a body paragraph might be this. When Coke fails in a country, the country itself experiences political turmoil. Here we have a clear supporting statement and a clear position that this paragraph will discuss. The relationship between Coke's failures and a country's failure. As mentioned, a topic sentence possesses many of the same qualities as a thesis statement. If you need to review what those are, see the video link below. Number two, there is no set length for paragraphs. It should be determined by the subject matter and evidence presented. But in general, paragraphs are between three and six sentences. Thirdly, information in the paragraph moves from general to specific. In academic essays where you must prove an idea or opinion, the idea flow is such that it resembles an inverted pyramid or triangle. That is, you go from a general statement, such as the topic sentence, and move gradually to more specific points. Here's a good example of this. When Coke fails in a country, the country itself experiences political turmoil. That's our topic sentence. In Somalia and Eritrea, Coke barely functioned or was forced to close because of uncooperative governments, which too sputtered along, riven by an internal strife and plundering. The Somalis stole their sugar imports, the Eritreans their syrup. Here we have gradually more detail the further into the paragraph we go. The first sentence begins on the level of Africa, then the next sentence moves to the country level, and the final sentence reveals the specific problems in the two countries. By the way, specific concrete examples are powerful ways to convince the reader of your point. Here we draw on two, one in Eritrea and one in Somalia. We could go even into more specifics if we wanted, such as dates and locations. If we get the order wrong and we don't move progressively from general to specific, then the reader is confused. Consider this. When Coke fails in a country, the country itself experiences political turmoil. That's our th topic sentence, but watch this next sentence. In Somalia, sugar was stolen, while in Eritrea, it was syrup. When Coke failed in these countries, so did their political systems. While each sentence is well constructed, the flow of the paragraph is illogical because the second sentence is too specific too quickly. In other words, there's a big gap in information between sentence one and sentence two. Constructing illogical sentence flow forces the reader to reread what you've written. This rarely ends well for anyone involved. Fourthly, a good paragraph should be well developed. A paragraph is designed to be long enough to develop sufficiently and clearly your ideas. Don't rush your conclusion. Let the evidence speak. So if we write the following, when Coke fails in a country, the country itself experiences political turmoil. In Somalia and Eritrea, Coke barely functioned and was forced to close because of uncooperative governments, which too sputtered along, riven by internal strife and plundering. 
Now, this is fine, but if we stop there, we have left out the third sentence where we have specific details and facts about events that led directly to the failure of Coke. Without this clincher, you force the reader to trust that that is what happened. By providing specifics, that is to say specific examples, you allow the reader to come to their own conclusions, which is always a better option. Finally, a good paragraph contains a transition to the next paragraph. This often occurs at the end of the paragraph. I'll have more to say about transitions in a separate video, but you must always ask yourself what the relationship is to the next paragraph. So for example, if we are going to discuss more examples of failure, but in a different part of Africa, then we might make a transition using geographical location. Take a look at the last transition sentence that has been added. But problems for Coke and their host country did not just appear in the East. Central Africa also had its problems. Here, I inform the reader that we are going to move to examples in the center of Africa. Such clear signposting makes reading enjoyable and comprehensible. Let's review what we've covered about paragraphs. But before we do, don't forget to tell your friends about this channel and this writing series. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and click the notification button. Oh, and if you want, you can throw in a comment about this video below. So to review, a good paragraph should contain a topic sentence, clear and directly related to the thesis statement. It should generally be three to six sentences. It moves from general to specific information in the form of an inverted triangle. It should be well-developed with sufficient examples and it should provide the reader with a transition, letting them know what is next. I hope your understanding of the paragraph and its function in a formal essay is clearer now. Thanks for watching and see you next Tuesday.